بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله عدد خلقه ريد نفسه وزنات العرش ومداد كلماته ومنتهى علم الجمع من شاء وخلق وذر وبرع على غيب شهادة الرحمن الرحيم المالك الكدوس العزيز الحكيم واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك له الحمد يحيي ويميت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وخليله وارسله بهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على دين كل لا كرهات المشركين ما بعد وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في الكتاب <تصفيق> ولقد خلقناكم ثم صوركم ثم قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا فسجدوا إلا إبليس لم يكون من 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 الساجدين الله سبحانه وتعالى in this ayah it discusses the and this is what the topic will discuss about shaitan in Adam we're not going to go into the full detail of the story but however what we will discuss is what took place and how shaitan became our enemy and how is it relevant still even to today one of the first things that we want to clarify is that shaitan he doesn't have any power some of us are still under the influences of the philosophical ideology and some even influenced by the christian ideology that shaitan Satan as the non-Muslims refer to him as or the devil that he controls evil Allahu billah Shaitan doesn't have any power and to think so this would contradict what Islam promotes The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned about qadr he said tu'minu bi qadri wa khayrihi wa sharri the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that we have to believe in the Qadr, Allah Ta'ala's pre, uh, uh, desti- uh, pre, pre-divine destination, right? Destiny, right? For destiny, for the outcome of people. Allah Ta'ala is in control of all of that. Wa khayrihi wa sharrihi. The good of it or those things, the inexperiences that we dislike. Those things that we deem to be bad. It is all under Allah Ta'ala's control. It's not karma. As many Muslims, you see many Muslims quote today and they believe that it's innocent. This is a problem in, in the Islamic Aqidah. Karma contradicts Qadr. What goes around, comes around, is not part of Islamic philosophy. Any reward that you receive, as Allah Ta'ala in the Prophet ﷺ teaches us. Any good that you're supposed to receive, it is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and there's no one that can stop it. And if there's anything that is evil or what you consider to be evil or inexperienced, uh, uh, a thing that is discomfort to you, a misfortune, whether it be the worst thing in the world, right? Or some of the, the, the most, because really according to the individual, our situation is according to how we perceive it. You'll say it's the worst thing in the world, but there's another man that can handle your situation, but you couldn't walk in his shoes. Even if you think about it, even during this time, you need to go back and analyze and reanalyze. For many of us who come from the hard times, who come from the struggles, whose boots are in the mud. If you look at it now, even during this time of this pandemic, we have outdoor vendors. I was just driving down the street and I seen the nation of Islam out there still selling their papers. 
And if you cross the bridge in Philadelphia, everybody's dining outside, they're eating, and they're opening markets outside as if this was beneath them, as if they came up with a new idea. But if you travel up on Erie Avenue, Woodland Avenue, you'll find men with stands. They've been having stands for years, taking care of their families. Many of us laugh at people who got stands. But if you look at the entire society now, now they're opening up outdoor markets. Whatever is meant for you to get, there's no one that can sway it away. So if you're gonna do good, don't do good because you think that karma will come back at you. Because this is not a, the belief of the Muslims. But anytime you do good, let it be because of Allah Ta'ala saying in the Quran, Inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Right? And those who do, those who believe, and they do amilu salih. <coughs> Not because if you do good, you receive good. But do it because you want to take the description of the believer. Anything that you do, if there is going to be a payback, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that payback will either leave you in a joyous state or it'll leave you in one that's most grievous. So shaitan doesn't control anything of evil. Let's throw that out the window. The second thing you want to throw out the window, this idea comes from the Bible. Shaitan wasn't a fallen angel. He's not a fallen angel. Shaitan was honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow him to be in the company of the malaika. That was the reality. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our father Adam alayhi salam, Allah Ta'ala said, لَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا ثُمَّ سَوَّرْنَكُمْ ثُمَّ قُلْنَا لِمَلَائِكَةِ إِشْجُدُوا لِآدَمَا Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions in the Quran that we certainly created you. So everybody that is in that, that is mentioned in this narrative is amongst creation. The malaika is created. They're created from nur, from light. Shaitan is a jinn by origin and he's created from fire. He's going to remind you of this too. And Adam alayhi salam was created from mud. It all originates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, all of you were created and given a form. You were given a form. Lil malaikati isjudu li adama. And then Allah Ta'ala said to the angels, prostrate to Adam. Prostrate. Fasjudu illa iblisa lam yakum min as Then Allah Ta'ala, he says about Iblis, he said, everyone may sujood except Iblis. Now believe this, believe it or not, what you find here is the beginning of, you know, the misbehavior of Iblis, which you also see in our same behavior. Everything that you pay attention to this story, everything that's in this story, we do the same thing we want, when we want to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times you hear the adhan, Hayyala salah, and people keep right on walking. Hayyal al falah and people keep right on going. It's more important. You're told not to do certain things, and we still do them anyway. Now watch how crafty Shaitan was. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Iblis, he wasn't amongst those who made sajda. So he disobeyed Allah. Qala ma mana'ak alla tajduda id amartuk. Allah Ta'ala, he said, what prevented you from prostrating? Basically, when I commanded you. Uqala, Iblis, he said, Ana khayru minhu. Huh? Ana khayru minhu. I'm better than him. Now see, this is where the excuses start to come in. The same way when we're called and we're told to pray and we start making excuses of why we can't pray. If it's not from the excuses of the hukum of sharia, if it's not from the excuses of the laws within the sharia, then we have no excuse on why we're missing salah. 
or whatever thing that Allah Ta'ala commands you to do. So then uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala he says, "Qala ana khayru minhu khalaqatani min an-nar." Huh? I'm better than him. You created me from fire. I ain't got to do that. That's only sunnah. I ain't got to do that. That wasn't exactly what it was. I ain't got to do that. That was the Arab customs. I don't have to do that. I don't have to obey Allah Ta'ala. Just come out and say it. Stop justifying it. Shaitan didn't give all that much riff rap or those kind of excuses. He just got right to it. Ana khayru minhu. I'm better than him. <laughs> what I look like? <laughs> Y'all bugging. Huh? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes on, he says, Wa khalaqatahu min, min teen. And you created him from clay. That thing is beneath me. I step on that. Fire, you can't even hold your hand over it. I'm superior. Mud, you step on it. You don't even want that on your clothes. You clean mud off. Fire destroys, it burns. Wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Uh, Allah SWT didn't command you, please get out, you know, get out of here, get, get, out of, get out of the paradise. Get out of the paradise, you're kicked out, you've been evicted. Disobedience gets you kicked out of paradise. We don't really look at it. Sometimes we look at the, the story where it talks about Shaitan and Iblis. We kind of look at it as like an old feeble, like a nighttime story. These type of behaviors will get you kicked out of Jannah. Like Allah Ta'ala, he said about, he said, he said, you know, get out of here. Because it is not for you to be tatakabbara. For you not to be arrogant in here. Tatakabbara fiha. Arrogance is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala owns that right of pride. One of the names of Allah Ta'ala is Al-Mutakabbir. Pride is Allah Ta'ala's right, it's not ours. Any honor and anything that we pride ourselves is based off of what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us. When you do not connect Allah Ta'ala to that blessing, this is where you become blameworthy for ujub or kibr. Where you become blameworthy for conceit or pride. Just like Shaitan, ana ahsan minhu. I'm better than him. I know, but they all gotta pray. But I can't pray. I, I can't pray. I ain't on my dean right now. I took a break. I was a bit left. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says, "Inna in in inna ka min al-sagirina." Allah Taala says that you're amongst the low people. You're amongst the debased. This is what He said to Shaitan. Well, call it Iblis. Iblis said. Just grant me that time until, until the, the, the blowing of the trumpet. Grant me that time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And you will, you will have that reprieve me. Alhamdulillah. Huh? 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 Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa sadada tabi'ina wa ulama amilina wa a'ima arba'i mushtahideen wa muqalidihim ila yawm al-deen wa ba'd Wa qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Qala Fabima agawaytani لا أقعدن لهم سراتك المستقيم. Continuing from this that Allah Taala is telling us, these these eyes in Surah Al-Araf, the seventh surah in the Quran. So Allah Taala he continues to tell you know, inform us about this situation. 
with shaitan and our father Adam he said shaitan said because you misguided me because you misled me because you put me in error now this is how bold he is talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you misguided me one of the names of Allah Ta'ala is Al-Hadi. The one who gives the guidance, right? But because you misguided me, and this is how sometimes our behavior towards what Allah Ta'ala calls us to, our behavior almost seems as if we're saying the same thing. You're supposed to pray five times a day. Well, I can't do that. Those who don't pray will enter into the fire. See, that's misguidance. You brothers are being extreme. You do what you can do. The only one that's extreme is the one that's on misguidance. That's how we behave. We have to at least get to the point of being extreme before we can even start declaring someone ain't being extreme. A lot of us are extreme on our laxity. How lax we are towards the deed. We're extreme in that. Some of us don't even get angry no more. We want to stop everyone from feeling angry about those things that Allah Ta'ala commands us not to do that people engage in. We want to give us a sedative, not to make you so upset. Because when you're not upset about a thing, then it, doesn't, it really doesn't permeate. It really doesn't uh, 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 take control of what's in the mind and, and, and ignite the heart. It doesn't spark anything. Right? Think about it. When you have a lover, you have a loved one, someone that you love. Right? And you think that person is cheating on you or being disloyal to you. You can't get your mind off of it. You lose sleep. You're tossing and turning throughout the night. You're looking at the picture of him or her, right? And if you got evidence, it's even worse. You can't even talk. You, you breathe it fast, your heart thumping. You, you gotta catch your breath before you say something. You gotta control your mind because you really, you just like ready to just kill every and everything that, that, that's walking, that's connected to that. All because of that disloyalty. But when it comes to Allah Ta'ala's deen, I was a beloved in Shaitan and Deen. MashaAllah. Huh? No big deal. Well, I can't, you can't judge me. This is how we get. But when it comes to something like someone cheating or, you know, on behalf of the sister, the brother can't provide, we all get together. We speak up hardly. We speak hard against that. Let us miss Salat. No big deal. It's no big deal. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to shaitan, he said, Aghwaytani la aqa'udanna lahum siratik al -mustaki. And I'll sit back because of this. I'm going to sit back and wait for them on the sit-off, on that path. I'm waiting for these jokers. I'm going to wait for them. The ones that are on the right path. Not those who disbelieve. Not those who are already engaged in wrongdoing. I want the ones who's trying to be on that straight path. Because what Shaitan, what he least uh, witnessed, his kibber, his pride came out. He said, Anna Ahsan Minhu, like as if he was reminding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if he didn't know the nature of shaitan, as if he didn't know Adam alayhi salam. Anna Ahsan Minhu. What he seen was his replacement. The same way that Carson Wentz said he wants to be traded because Jalen Hurts took his spot. That's how, that's how equivalent, that's how relevant it is. See, Hurts, uh, Wentz, don't, Hurts, uh, Wentz don't want to play no more. Not here. Anna Ahsan Minhu. Huh? Y'all understand that? I'm birds, I'm a Giants fan, so what? Anyway, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, he says, Thumma la ati ati yannahum min abayna yaday wa min khalfihim wa an aymanihim wa an shema'ilihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then went on and he mentioned that this is what shaitan, this is still shaitan saying. He's going to wait for us on that straight path and then he's going to attack us with Baina Aidihim. What's right in front of us? 
Meaning he's going to try to have you, have, cause you to whisper to you. Because you got to understand the whisper of shaitan, the whisper of shaitan is his, I mean, uh, the, the weapon of shaitan is his whisper. Allah Ta'ala tells you that shaitan is a doom of being. He's a clear enemy to you. So when you have a clear enemy, you're on guard against this individual. You're on post. You're, you're, you're ready. Whatever this person got to give and what he's going to offer you, you try to prepare yourself for it. You have the Quran and Allah is preparing you in the Quran. See, shaitan's whisper is weak. It's like a cobweb. When you're walking through a basement, sometimes even with the lights out, you'll break a cobweb and wouldn't even recognize it. There's no effort being put into it. That's how weak the plot of shaitan is. But when we're negligent to the reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that cobweb feels like a steel door. And you just can't seem to get around it. And the more we're disobedient without making tawbah, the harder our life gets for us, the more complicated it gets. And see, and then what happens? So Shaitan, he says that he's going to come, Baina Aidi him, right in front of you, right? Then Shaitan, he says that he's going to khalifi him. He's going to behind you, right? He's going to make you get more and more, uh, whisper to you to become more and more in love with the dunya. See, because the more you love the dunya, the more you forget about death. The more you love dunya, when death comes, the, the more you're not willing to accept it. This is why we, this is why many of us, we have a hard time embracing death. Muslims don't see the reality of death the same way that those who disbelieve see death. There were many people who didn't want to die. You remember the whole concept of the pharaohs? And they wrapped, wrapped themselves up in mummy, they were trying to preserve themselves? Huh? People used to believe you could freeze yourself from dying? All of these things, our perception of death is different from those who disbelieve. The more you accumulate in the dunya, the more cowardly you become. More cowardly you become. You don't want to leave. Many people don't want to leave because they love their wife. There's nothing wrong with loving your wife. But if you got a believing wife, she's going to remind you we'll see each other in the akhirah. Huh? Long as we die on the kalima, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So anyway, so he says... وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ And on his right side, I'm going to discourage him from doing good deeds. I want to discourage him. Huh? Shaitan don't want you to do good deeds. And when you do start to do, do good, good, good deeds, what happens? He do things like, just hold on. Don't make salat yet. Ak, angle the camera just a little bit this way. So that when I go into sajda, you can see my armpits and I'll look just like the, look like the hadith. Right? And I'm going to show them that I have the best prayer. Huh? He starts to do things like riyah. Start to do things like tabarut. All of our women now are like almost out of their garbs. Lipstick, caked up, makeup. Those things are fine in the house for your husband. But they're coming out of the home like this now. Caked up and drenched with perfume, with scents, as the Prophet ﷺ called it, said the woman who wears scents, who scented when she comes out the house, she's calling the zina. She's calling to adultery and fornication. We forget about those things or we disregard those things. And then Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَعَنَا شَمَائِلِ Right? شَمَائِلِ him. And then call them from their left side. Where they always dreary, where they always in a state of depression. You know, why am I even praying anyway when I know I'm gonna go to the hellfire? Now other than that. All of these things, Shaitan will whisper to you until you take a liking to what he says. He'll whisper to you. And why is that? If you don't have the nafs under control, if you don't have the lower self under control, your desires. The nafs is like that old recalcitrant woman waiting for her lover to go to work. She's waiting for you to go to work so she can invite her new boyfriend in or her side dude. That's how shaitan is. He wants you to fall off that path. That's what he wants from you. 
So all of the things that he can throw at you, he's going to throw it at you. If he make you doubt about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence, that's how he's going to hit you. If he can hit you with making you think that your, that your good deeds ain't enough for you to get to paradise, so abandon him, that's how he's going to hit you. He's going to hit you either way he can. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us this in closing. He says that shaitan also says, وَلَا تَجِّدُوا أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ that you won't find many of them grateful to you. You won't find them grateful. You won't find them grateful trying to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They'll do it part time. They'll worship you based on how they're feeling. If they're feeling on an up and up, things are up and up, then they'll pray. If it's down, they won't pray. If they believe in you today, they'll pray. They'll do those things that you command of them. They have to think about it. The opposite of shukr is kufr. Ingratitude. Ingratitude. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the closing this last ayat I'll mention in this khutbah will be concluded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says qala ikhruj minha once again Allah Ta'ala ordered Shaitan out of the out of the paradise. He kicked them out. He was expelled. Then he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said. Liman tabi'aka and whoever follows you, men whom from amongst them, meaning us. Meaning us. If we if we adhere to that whisper of shaitan, see you can protect yourself from shaitan, from his whisper. We will discuss this tonight in our class at six o'clock tonight. You can protect yourself from shaitan. It's very simple. Like I said, his whispers is nothing more than a cobweb. But the more disobedient to the more disobedient to Allah Ta'ala you are, the more it seems like an iron door. You just keep running into it and you can't close that door. You can't knock it down. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, whoever from amongst them, whoever obeys him, you know, whoever follows him from, that, that are from among them, meaning us. Li amla'anna jahannama minkum ajma'in. And this is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah ta'ala said that he will fill hellfire with all of us. We pray that Allah ta'ala protects us from that. I mean, subhanakallahu wa bihamdika wa shalom wa la ilaha ila anta wa astaghfiru wa atubu alayhi wa kama salah.